Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a soldering iron here. This is not something I've been sent to review or anything like that. In fact, actually, Detlef gave me this as a gift. So, the story behind this, Detlef bought one of these soldering irons on a special offer from AliExpress. And we had a look at this very quickly on a live stream on the Electronics Channel a little while ago. He managed to pick one of these up on a special offer from AliExpress for actually €1.99. Now, the offer on these varies a little bit. I'll show you the current offer on the pick three and save offer. I'll actually give you the link to this. I'm not sure this will work everywhere. It works for me. So you'll see you can actually buy this here for four euros 19. Uh, with free shipping. And you can also buy, I would suggest from here, the tips. So I have a set of three tips for this. That's this one. So we have the three tips on offer at one ninety nine. Okay, we have the soldier line at four nineteen, so that's six eighteen, and just buy something else to make it up to three items. Yeah, loads of things you can pick from. Yeah, one ninety nine for a nice silicone motherboard work pad thing. Yeah. So where are we up to now? About eight euros something, yeah? So if you're gonna buy one, guys, I would get it from there. But before you buy one, I guess you want to know, is this thing actually any good or not, yeah? Is it any good? So this is a test and review, let's see. I must stop looking at this, by the way. Once I start looking down these, I always end up ordering something. So before I can do that, let's move on. Yeah. Okay, so here is our soldering iron. Uh, Four euros nineteen. It comes with quite a short USB charging cable. So this is USB C. The soldering iron is, it says, 8 watts, which doesn't sound very powerful, does it? Okay. We have a little holder. With the uh, wet sponge, or it will be wet, so we have a little holder for it, like so. Oh, this is for keeping tips in, by the looks of it. We have a tip. This is just a straight conical tip, yeah. And we have some solder, which is quite thick gauge, I think, probably one millimeter or 1.2, something like that, on a little reel. And that's what we get for our four euros 19. Then I added the additional tips. So for another 199, you've just seen, we have three tips. I think this must be like a resealable thing. I'm not quite sure. Well, you know, when I said these are for holding tips, they're not because you don't fit in there, okay? So I'm not sure about that now. Uh, not sure what that's for, actually. Well, I've got into the packaging rather destructively. And here are the tips. So this is, yeah, basically the same as the one that came with it in actual fact. So it's like we get two additional tips. This one is rather like the BC3, which is what I like to use on my T12. And this is a blade, okay? So we have a few tips there. Are these actually the same? Yeah, they look the same. Okay, so there we go. For just over six euros. These just screw on, okay, fairly good. I mean, they're nice and solid. It's not gonna fall off, okay. So I'm sure what you want to know is, does it work? Yeah, not only does it work, but how well does it work? Let's see if there's any charge in it. So I think one quick press, or is it press and hold? Press and hold and it's flashing and goes out. Flashes and goes out. Maybe we should read the manual. 
<laughs> Press and hold for five seconds to power on after the indicator flashes. It is in the power on state. Press the button to adjust the temperature when the machine is turned on. Green is for low, blue is for medium, red is for high. After use, press the button again for five seconds to power it off. Okay, that sounds fairly sensible. Let's put on the tip that came with it. I do hope this isn't switched on. Well, it doesn't seem to be. Okay, finger tight. So press and hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Flashes. Green, low. Blue, medium. Red, hot. Press and hold for five seconds. Switch off. So I'd like to see what temperature that actually goes to. So, my latest toy, I really do like this, guys. Thermal camera multimeter. Oh, hold this in for long enough, I'm also going to use this. Quick press. Press the, boot the thermal camera. Thermal cameras always take a bit of time to boot all of them, okay? And what do we have? Well, we have the soldering iron. So it's at 35 degrees and cooling down. Okay. We'll press the button once for five seconds. You see it flashing? That in itself doesn't seem to warm it up. I think we have to press it once to change the colour. So red. warming up well, it takes a little while actually so it's not the fastest thing in the world to warm up I'm not sure how well charged the battery is actually I mean this just came out of the box okay that is slow And that seems like it's struggling to get warm. Yeah. Thermal camera got tired and went to sleep. Oh, that is... Yeah, guys, this is just taking a very long time. Leave it to it. And then I will try charging the battery, okay? So clearly this isn't hot enough to melt solder at the moment. Oh, it is? Oh, do you know what? That's interesting. That says it's 135 degrees, and this is melting solder. Do I have the wrong cursor in the wrong place or something stupid? No, it's definitely that centre one. Oh, guys, I'm completely wrong. We need to measure the tip. Okay. Sometimes if I go into uh, green, I guess it'll take a bit of time to cool down. About 185. Still melting solder. Blue. Well, I will say that the actual red, blue, green on here doesn't seem to affect the temperature. Maybe just affects the wattage so effectively how powerful it is, if you see what I mean. The temperature itself seems to stay basically the same. Okay, well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say, so let's try and desolder a few things with it. This is just an old scrap mix where I've been taking some parts off, so we can experiment a bit with this. 
try one of these capacitors and then we'll try some surface mount stuff in the bit on like a, a motherboard or something but for now let's see how well it works so here I have a capacitor I can see the legs of it okay add a bit of solder Actually, I'm in the wrong place there, just find where the capacitor is, it's actually here. Well, this thing certainly solders, you know, look at that. Certainly solders. Uh, okay, let's see if we can remove this. You know, it came straight out the board, did you hear it? Guys! Let's try unsoldering one of these potentiometers, see if it will do this. So, we'll just make sure the iron is hot. Okay, it is melting solder. Okay. Let's see, so we'll just uh, get on there. Well, you know, guys, this isn't working very well now. I'll just uh, check so we're on green, we're on blue, we're on red. Maybe I hadn't actually put it on to high temperature when I just switched it on. It did flash the red, but maybe it doesn't actually go to that setting initially. Let's see. Yeah, that seems to work better. Okay. So it looks like you have to set it to the temperature you want I can certainly melt solder on the tip but I'm not getting much in the way of heat into the potentiometer okay so maybe I've just bitten off something bigger than I can chew here basically yeah it's not uh, really doing that very well but this is a lower powered soldering iron so I'm probably being rather ambitious here Okay. Let's get in there. Yeah, I wouldn't like to use this for this sort of work, which is true. But we can try a different tip. Okay, this is the BC3 type tip. Yeah, let's see. I'm flashing. So we have green, blue, red, okay. It does seem to remember the last setting that you used, actually. Let's see what this does. Well, the larger tip seems to have more thermal capacity because it takes a bit longer to warm up. That's a very good indication of that. Okay, let's see, will this do it? No, so you're not going to use this on large components like that. Let's try some SMD components. Here's an old T-Con board, a scrap one. We use this regularly on the live stream for playing around with things and testing things so let's see if we can unsolder one of these capacitors we'll go for one of the small components and if it does that let's go for a larger one normally to this i would add flux first this is what i would normally do so let's do it uh we we'll should go for this one okay so we have flux on there uh, zoom in a little bit okay you see it Right, what does a soldering iron do? So we'll try to heat one end first. Okay, well it's got that, no problem. Other end, it's got it. Will this actually come off the board if I heat it from one end? I mean, sometimes, sometimes even with my T12, they won't. Sometimes they will. Sometimes I have to go from both sides at once. So... 
not easily from one end. Let's go for both ends at once. Yeah, that's coming off. Yeah, we have it. Okay, I thought I had it. Yeah, I do have it there. So that is on soldering, no problem. Okay, let's go for one of the larger ones. So we have a quite a chunky one here. Okay. I also want a bit of leaded solder because this is what I would normally do. So this will put a bit of leaded solder in. Yeah. Uh, Okay, both ends and then the same. So we'll try and unsolder this. So we'll just try to get both ends to mouse. Oops, I've still got the old one on there. Just get rid of that. Okay, so here we go. So heat, heat, heat. Oh, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, it's off. So firm SMD components this does seem to work rather well I've just been having a look at these tips that came with the iron so you'll see that this part actually unscrews from here okay and here we have like a uh, plastic or possibly heating element type thing okay let's just get in there there and then like a middle connection and this looks like uh, that's a flat bit which goes into the body of the soldering iron. And this basically looks like a coaxial plug. So I think probably the actual heating element is in the tip. And we can just check for that actually. So if I take the multimeter thermal camera, okay. And we just go to uh, ohms range. Yeah. And let's measure the resistance of this thing. So from the metal sleeve into the center, about 1.2 ohms, 1.11. 1. So given this is five volts, I mean, it may step the voltage up a bit internally. That's probably right. What you'd expect pretty much. So we can just put this thing back on again. So I would say the actual heating element is in the tip, like a T12 or other various modern types. Yeah, you see the same sort of resistance there. So that's how the tips are working. Obviously, that gives a higher efficiency if the heating element is embedded in this part, okay? It's possible these tips were originally designed to fit onto something else, and this is like... An adapter for this, not quite sure, but maybe. So, what do I think of this one? Well, it's probably one of the cheapest soldering irons you can buy. It's obviously meant for smaller jobs. I mean, that potentiometer, it just wasn't going to do it, okay? It was just a step too far for it. But small and even large uh, SMD capacitors were on soldering very easily and normally something like a T-Com board that's quite high thermal mass a lot of ground and power planes in there so I would say personally it isn't really a substitute for a bench power supply but you know what this is the sort of thing you want to keep in the car yeah <laughs> because you never know when you're out and about if something happens you might need to solder something keep a bit of solder with it It'll certainly do that so I'm not going to give each points. I know Detlef has played with one of these more, so hopefully Det will come along and say what he thinks. Um, I'd say it's not a toy. It's not a substitute for a bench soldering iron, but it's probably better than those little gas ones you get if you're working outdoors, if you want to do a little bit here and there. Okay, guys, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Down there, let us know. Hope you enjoyed that quick testing review. I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.